Okay, so I am recording now. So today we're going to be covering keyframe properties. So um, our last on our last episode, we talked about creating pegs and then setting keyframes on those pegs to control our animation. So the next thing that we want to do with our pegs is control how they perform that animation. So there are four main things that we're talking about today. The four main properties, ease, how quickly or slowly the keyframe transforms into the next keyframe. Continuity, controls the smoothness of the transition. Tension, control, controls how sharply the path will bend through a, uh, through a point on the, uh, on the path. And bias, which will control the shape of the path towards one keyframe over the other. So, sorry I'm chewing. So one sec, so let's see what that looks like. So I have, I'll let me make sure I uh, undo all my stuff. I think that's fully, uh, yeah, so redo one more. Okay, so, I just have this yellow ball here, um, and I have three points made on a path. So I have a keyframe at one, I have a keyframe at 20, I have a keyframe at 40. Okay, so on keyframe one, there's nothing before it, so there's nothing to worry about. Keyframe 20 has one keyframe before it, and keyframe 40 has two keyframes for it. However, these settings only affect the relationship between the keyframe before it and after it. So for purposes of what we're talking about today, we're gonna talk about keyframe 20, or my middle keyframe in this, in this case. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is ease. So let me move this more here. And so ease is the easiest one <laughs> to uh, to edit because it's right here on the timeline the other ones you have to go into uh, you have to go into the actual settings and change it it used to be very easy in the old version of Toon Boom but now they think it's advanced animation techniques like moving something or rotating it so anyway so first one is ease so you'll see if you click this little drop down menu and if I hover over it it'll tell you set ease type Set speed pattern between two keyframes. So basically, by default, it's always going to be set to the straight line, so just linear. So what what you can see is on my path, all of the frames are evenly spaced from one another. Now, if I change my ease type, I'm gonna pick this uh, heavily slanted. Um, it stays on the X or closer to the x-axis most of the time. I'm on frame 20 and you'll see that it's changing how through this point here into my next keyframe there's many keyframes towards frame 20 and there are many frames I should say in betweens and then you can see they start spacing out the farther they are away from keyframe 20 and the reason why that is, is I've now biased it in its ease type to be slow coming out of the keyframe at frame 20. Uh, that's not accurate. Um, and then as it gets farther away from 20 and gets closer to the keyframe at 40, it starts moving much more rapidly. So if I zoom out here and I'll play this. You can see how after frame 20, it slows down for a second and then speeds back up. And it'll be much more pronounced if I move this out here to say keyframe, or the keyframe out to frame 80, excuse me. So let me go back here. So you'll see it slows down a lot and then starts picking up speed again. And then if I do the exact opposite, It's gonna do exact, excuse me, exactly what you think. As I hit 20, it will speed up 
and then it will slow down, slow into its position at frame 80. So the ease types, let me go back into the notes. So that controls how quickly or slowly, we'll talk about ease more in a second down here, the transition. Um, continuity, tension, and bias. I'm just going to do us all a favor and skip on down to here because I gave you guys a picture that comes from Toon Boom's website. So they aren't entirely worthless, but um, continuity, controlling the smoothness of the transition. So here is the continuity goes from negative one to positive one, with zero being the default, um, default number. Um, so if you lower the continuity to minus one, it becomes very sharp. If you have the continuity at plus one, it creates this little McDonald's I'm loving it shape. <laughs> tension, so tension to minus one really tries to push the path instead of being a uh, grad or instead of being a more direct curve becomes very um, bul bulbous, I guess, curve. Um, it, it flares out the uh, midpoints of your path. So in the middle frame, the middle frames in between these two key frames, it tries to push those locations farther away from the center. Whereas with tension plus one, very much like continuity of minus one, it just pulls it into a snug, just straight line. So boom boom and then bias the bias controls the slope of the path so if you have a bias of minus one it'll push it to the keyframe that is um, the left side of the control point yeah okay I was gonna say something different um, yeah so bias of minus one favors the left side of the control point so you can see how the arc now bends instead of this being right at the top of the arc. It's now making the arc slightly off to the left from the keyframe. Positive one being the opposite pushes the, the high point of the arc off to the right. So the only one that you will use, uh, well actually the two of them that you'll use, you'll use bias at some times, but you'll more often be messing with tension for either making your curves more rounded or for removing the roundness in a path so that it becomes just straight lines, which is what we're gonna need to do with Pac-Man so that Pac-Man doesn't Tokyo Drift. So let's go back up here. How do we edit these properties? Um, as I showed you, the ease is right there on the timeline, very easy to get to. Continuity, tension, and bias are in a place called the path editor, and more on that in a second. Oh, sorry. Are people still copying uh, from up here? Just by the way. Okay. So I'm gonna just do this. All right, so what do the different lines in the ease menu change about the keyframe? So like we already talked about, that is the different uh, speeds going out from that keyframe you have selected towards the next keyframe. So how quickly it will both leave its current location and how quickly it will arrive at the end. All right, so just for sake of describing them, let's keep it, let's uh, imagine the curves that are in the ease menu are just slapped onto a positive one, zero to positive one and zero to positive one coordinate plane like you guys have probably seen a bajillion times in any math class where you've had the misfortune to have to do graphing. So um, so let's assume the x-axis and the y-axis. So arcs that stay closer to the x-axis lengthen how long it stays closer to your original location. So in our for our case, it when it is uh, when the arc is angled like this 
See how it's staying closer to the x-axis and then it sharply approaches the y. Um, or as it rises on the y, it happens very suddenly. So then by contrast, you have these ones very quickly approach our final position, movement up the y-axis, and then it slows into that final position. So if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see how it's very slow over here because there's a lot of frames very quick over here and uh, okay um, let me flip back over the notes so the straighter the line means just simply a more even transfer oh is the bell gonna ring yeah okay cool Alexis the bell is gonna ring by the way so let's uh move on down here just for sake of uh, helping you guys copy things in I'm gonna delete that real quick so actually let me undo that so this button is the button that we're gonna click on in a second so this little blue uh, squirrely thing Alexis you gotta go to your next class um, so how do we access the path editor which we talked about up here this is where you can edit these continuity, tension, and bias properties. So it is uh, not well hidden per se, but it is hidden off the beaten path. So you gotta open your layer properties. So that just means double clicking the layer of the peg in this case. So I'm just gonna double click the layer. If you double click on the name, it's just going to offer you the option to change the name. So double click on the blank space on the layer. And that'll pop this up. And this is the layer properties for my peg. On there, the position, there's just, you don't want to, you'll see that these are all grayed out. We're not clicking the path editor for the grayed out ones. We're clicking for where it says GP path because mine's, I just named my layer G and then P for peg. So I'm going to just click this icon right there at the top. And it'll bring me to this 3D path editor. Um, so this is just a graph of how my um, keyframes are transitioning. And you can see it's doing that, uh, it's doing the curving thing, the Tokyo Drift still, because it's still rounded. So then here are our three properties. So here's bias, continuity, and tension. So for frame 20, I want to click on the keyframe in the 3D path editor, and you'll see that all of these fill in with information about my uh, keyframe at frame 20. And you'll see again, my default values for tension are zero and bias zero, continuity zero. So if I want to make this a more snug, oh, and also I'm gonna put this back to linear acceleration okay so if I want to make this nice and straight and I'm trying to make it so that it doesn't Tokyo drift through the the walls of my um, of my Pac-Man thing here I'm gonna take my tension value and turn that up to 1 and just hit enter now you can see boom straight line to straight line I could also, as we talked about earlier, set my continuity to minus one. And you'll see it has the same effect. So um, I encourage you just to use tension because it's more straightforward that you're saying, I want it to be tight. So positive one value. Now it's very tight. It's like, a, it's like if you pulled, tight, pulled a string tightly. So. And go back to the notes so those are your steps open the layers property click on that little path button to open the 3d 3d view or 3d path editor excuse me and then once the path editor opens you can mess with the keyframes by clicking on them and then you can set their values so what you are going to be doing for your uh, part two of your 
of your Pac-Man is that you need to make sure that your Pac-Man has tense, um, the movement is tense so that it's not like sliding through the walls. So that way, when I, when I look at it, you should make sure that the acceleration looks good and that it's not going through any walls or anything like that. Another note. Did you save it? Yeah, I did, but it's not, for some reason it's not telling me to come back. Um, when you come back in later, I'll help you with it, because I'm in the middle of the lecture, but yeah. Um, so, uh, the other thing that you want to uh, make sure is that your rotations are good, and that, uh, as I already said, that the speed is uh, appropriate. If you need to change the speed of something, Speed is simply controlled by distance over time. So what, what you need to do is, if you need to move a keyframe so that it either speeds up or slows down, then you just select it and you can just click it once and then click and drag it and you can move it to a different point on the timeline. It's not gonna change any of the any of the effects of the locations and stuff like that, it's just going to change the amount of time that it takes for it to arrive at its next location. All right. 